through millet uh, in about under 10 minutes, I want to answer to the question raised by Jessica. Can we have healthy people? And can we have a healthy planet? And can we in fact have both of them? Am I understanding you correctly? Okay. So, and I will add one more to that in the end. So, um, through an experiment uh, uh, that we have been doing for the last two, three years in the state of Karnataka, so I just want to share our experience with you uh, this afternoon. Um, I am an agriculture, uh, look after agriculture, so I deal primarily with farmers. Um, my state is a predominantly low rainfall, rain-fed agriculture state. So the rainfall is about 600 mm average and increasingly becoming unreliable. <coughs> Droughts are more frequent than normal rainfalls. We have irrigation for only about 30% in Karnataka in my state. 70% farmers are limited in their choices of what they can grow. They obviously can't grow rice, they can't grow wheat, um, maybe maize, but their choices are limited. So millets are a very good choice for these farmers because they can grow farmers. And if farmers don't have the ability to invest on high value crops, millets are a low input cost, low risk crop. So they come to the help of those farmers as well. So those with no access to water or limited water, those with very poor soils, and uh, those with very low capacity for investment. But it sounds like it's a good proposition, but if you look at the millet area, that has been declining rapidly in the last 20 years in my state and across India and probably in many parts of the world as well. Because post uh, 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 Green Revolution, we shifted towards a few high value crops. Now, when we wanted to revive this area, we approached the farmers and we said, look, this is a good proposition. We should grow more millets. So the immediate response from farmers was, yes, we can grow them, but what are we going to do with them? Uh, who, who is going to buy them? Who is going to use them? Um, do you want us to grow it just because it's good? So this is a proper, I mean, this is, uh, I think goes back to what was being said earlier. You solve one problem, then you create another problem. So then we said, okay, how do we get around this? So then we looked at the consumption side of it. So what we see on the consumption side, now I'll talk briefly about health issues, is that in India we are seeing a, a, quite a, a rapid increase in incidence of diabetes. Um, India, for a long many years, as you may be aware, we had problems with communicable diseases. But by and large, now we have put a lid on communicable diseases. What's getting out of control uh, is non-communicable diseases. And as you are all aware, diabetes leads to you know all kinds of other uh, cardiovascular, kidney, what have you, blood pressure, and all these uh, other health challenges, and uh, that's rising rapidly. And in India, we are susceptible in appears to diabetes because onset is 10 years earlier compared to other countries. Why is this happening? For I mean, it's a complex story. I will simplify it for two reasons. Because our diets, which were quite diverse 30 years ago, have become less diverse and more composed out of foods like rice, white flour, sugar, oil. So our diets have changed. Calorie intake has increased, but the diversity has shrunk to some extent, and hence uh, we are consuming a lot of foods that, you know, indirectly contribute to uh, uh, diabetes and combine that with more and more sedentary lifestyles that come with affluence. So in combination, two of these are producing very high rates of diabetes. So millets are a great fit 
to check diabetes and these other uh, because they have very low glycemic index, they are gluten free, high in iron, high in calcium, uh, relatively good in protein, and all the micronutrients. So here is a problem and here is a solution. And farmers are willing to grow it. So we said, how do we then uh, combine the two together? Uh, we started spreading awareness about millets from the government side uh, by organizing small fairs where we talked about the health benefits of millets to the consumers. Now, then we realized that, okay, bringing in public is one thing, but we need to amplify the message in a relatively short span of time, otherwise we can go on spreading the message and that can take its own time. Then we said we need to work with key influencers who have a larger reach with the public. So we identified health and nutrition correspondents of media. We identified chefs, some of the well-known chefs uh, uh, in and around where we work. We, uh, we found that a lot of online bloggers, food bloggers, actually have very good reach in the society. So we identified them. We identified nutritionists, dietitians, hotel management schools. So we started working with them, conducting workshops for them to share the health benefit part of the millet story with them. And through them, we started amplifying the message to greater and greater number of people. <clears throat> the message started spreading. So people are now willing to consume, but then they started asking because millet consumption has gone down to such levels that, okay, millets are good for my health, but how do I eat them? Because now I've reached a situation where I don't know what to do with millets. Though they were a big part of my diet 30 years ago, but today we have moved so far from them. So then, you know, we had to again work with various stakeholders to develop various recipes of what you can do with millets. Traditional food, contemporary Indian food, contemporary Western food. So we started developing recipes and sharing uh, those as well with people. So we in fact government brought out a recipe book of what you can cook uh, with millets with the help of research institutes. ICRISAT, Indian Institute of Millet Research, so on and so forth. And, okay, the message is now delivered to the public. There is a little bit of hunger in the public. They want to switch to millets because it's good for their health. But how do we deliver? So farmers are willing to grow, people are willing to consume, but how do you connect? Farmers would, of course, come and tell us, you know, let the government procure it from the farmers and deliver it. But it's not just about grain, it's about food. We can't, government can't do that, even, you know, grains we can't do, so question of food. So we brought in the private players. So we spoke to the food companies. We told them, look, here is a very good value proposition, and here is the demand, and here is the opportunity for you. So some of the big players, everybody responded positively, by the way. But big players look for scale, so they are watching. But in the meantime, what we have seen is some of the medium players have jumped in into the opportunity. And even more so, what we are seeing is a lot of small new startups who saw a value proposition, who saw an opportunity, and who have started small enterprises. Youngsters quit IT jobs and jumped into this space, and they have come up with now ready to cook, ready to eat, easy foods made out of millets. In fact, some of the mothers have started their own companies uh, 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 to, uh, not mother, a grandmother uh, started a company and now she can't cope with the demand. Uh, two, I was sharing with some people, two mothers, parents who have young kids who realize their kids need better uh, quality food, uh, two mothers came together and they have started uh, 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 a small baby food company uh, made out of uh, millets. So 
the opportunity is leading way to new values, new businesses, new jobs are getting uh, created in the process. So we started with the production side, basically. We realized that unless there's a market pool, we can't uh, sustain it. We came to the market space, spoke to people about the health benefits of millets, and then brought in the companies to connect and complete the loop. Two things I will add before I conclude. One is, okay, one is we've connected the farmers, but then my challenge always is, at least in my country, how do we re-deliver a better share of the retail rupee to the farmers? So many of the companies are willing to procure from the farmers directly, but I come from a country with small and marginal holdings. A company cannot be expected to deal with a multitude of farmers. I mean, that's a nightmare for them. So that's why they rely on middlemen, right? So we came back to the farmers and we said, look, it's not enough to grow millets. You need to form yourselves into groups, federations, so that you can aggregate at your level and maybe do a little bit of the primary processing. And then we will connect you because companies are willing to buy from you directly. So that's exactly what we have done. So we formed them into federations. Government is investing on their capacity building about business sense and investing for the infrastructure necessary for processing. And now we do uh, buyer-seller meets with the companies. For companies, it's a great value proposition because it reduces their energy output on vendor development and it reduces their procurement cost. So they are now connected directly with farmers. They have signed MOUs between each other and they are buying directly from farmers. And now, in fact, companies see a lot of value in co-branding because they want to put the, put the farmer group name on the label because that delivers better traction in the market as well. So that also, we hope, will ensure a better share of the retail rupee goes to the uh, uh, farmer. Now, the last point. I spoke about health. I spoke about farmers. But this, is, this discussion is also about sustainability, right? So, <coughs> millets use very, as I mentioned earlier, require very little water. In a water, water scarce country like ours, where we always have, um, you know, uh, tensions about water usage, water sharing, um, there cannot be a better crop than millets. <coughs> In, when it comes to water usage, efficiency, and sustainability. Millets don't require any chemical sprays at all. At all. At all. I'm a millet grower, so I can tell you for sure we don't use any chemical sprays. They require about 25-30% of the chemical fertilizers we use for rice or wheat. So fertilizer, very low requirement, no chemical spray requirement. Their environmental footprint is very small compared to other crops. And not just that, if there is any crop, at least in my experience, I come from the southern peninsula in India. As I said in the beginning, we are exposed to frequent droughts. That's more common than a normal season. If there is one crop that is standing last in a year of drought, that is millets. So it's drought resilient. And hence, when you talk about climate change, at least from my point of view, I want the millets in my basket as my solution as I prepare for climate change, climate resilient. As a, it's a climate smart crop as well. And just one, another quick point. In my experience, where I come from, this is also attested by research institutions, there is no other high quality fodder like millet fodder that is available in our experience. So it's very nutritive fodder as well. So hence, we have been running this Smart Foods campaign. We have, what we have done is we have brought together various stakeholders, research institutes like Ikrisan, like Indian Institute of Millet Research, like Swaminathan Foundation, private companies, government. So we have brought together a group, a coalition of interested parties 
who are now leading the smart foods campaign uh, in India, uh, at least in our state. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it is getting uh, good traction and, and, and uh, there is a lot of good response. So in order to bring all the stakeholders together, uh, we organized trade fairs. We did one earlier this year. We are doing a much bigger one uh, next year uh, in January. So if you really want to see and see for yourself what I have said has got any ground truth in, you are welcome to come and check us out in January. It's in Bangalore uh, in, in, in India. And you can see the buzz that we have created. We can, you can see for yourself the cycle we have created and how it is uh, working very well. We are looking to scale it up as well. So we welcome any partners. We have come, uh, help from uh, all you people. So coming back to your question. So here is a something that's good for our Can health. Wrap up in one yes. Minute. No, half a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so coming back to you, you asked the question. Something that's good for our health, good for the health of the planet. Here is millet, which is good for our health. Good for the health of the planet, not just that, I add you one more, it's good for the farmer as well. Particularly the small, marginal farmer who is stuck with very poor soils. So it is a smart food in our view. I think this is something we should all have. So hence, Government of India has actually proposed that 2018 be the year of International Year of Millets. So that's something for everybody to mull about. So we welcome you to join in our campaign. And if any questions later on, we'll address those. Thank you.